Hey there, friends. You know how the media tries to get us to memory hole things that they're not fond of us actually remembering for various reasons? Kind of like the way they've memory holed the whole Trump assassination attempt. They've memory holed what Kamala's leanings used to be. And the gender pretender shooting in Nashville, Tennessee last March in 2023. Remember they talked right away about how there were multiple notebooks, maps of the school, um, all kinds of manifesto journals and all kinds of things. like. I want to say they named a number of notebooks that they talked about. Well, pieces of that have been leaked out by Stephen Crowder, and the Tennessee Star has done a really good job. Tennessee Star is under a lot of pressure there in the state of Tennessee. In fact, they're being sued by a lot of people because they aren't fearful of getting the word out, and they're doing it. And by doing so, they're actually getting themselves dragged into court. They've done an awesome job of doing this. They're the ones who are responsible for this release of this, quote, manifesto. And I say, quote, manifesto, this ain't the manifesto. It's called the manifesto in a lot of different headlines and things like that, simply because it is a headline grabber, and it is what we were waiting on, so it does make us go to it. Heck, I used it in my own headline just because that's what it's being called, right? It gets people's attention because that's what we've been waiting on this whole time. This is, make no mistake, this is not the manifesto. This is simply one of the notebooks, about 50 pages of it, that the Tennessee Star has taken from the journal of the girl who mowed down these six innocent people at the Covenant School. So this is real, this is a, like a small snapshot inside the mind more than anything. Not a lot of details about the actual crime itself. Again, more of a, 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 you get to see the mental instability of this person's mind leading up to the actual uh, shooting, the event. Um, again, still important to read, and I think it's important that we take a look at stuff like this, but let's not get our hopes up too high because I don't think we're going to get a lot out of this. In fact, I went through the, well, I guess it was 80-something pages because it was 43 p slides with roughly two on each page. So we're talking about 80 plus pages of information. I read it all and I'm gonna show you just the highlights because there's not a ton to look at, but there are certainly some things that we need to pay particular attention to that make you ask more questions and make you say, now I gotta see the rest of it. Headline, the Tennessee Star releases, quote, manifesto left by transgender covenant school killer, Audrey Hale. On Tuesday, the Tennessee Star and Editor-in-Chief Michael Patrick Leahy, he's the one that's really been doing a lot of work, and he's the one being sued in court. They released 90 pages of writings left by Covenant School killer Audrey Elizabeth Hale. They go on to state that the journal was legally obtained by the Star from a source familiar with the investigation in June of 2024. Now, this was a notebook that was taken from the crime scene in the car that Hale used to drive to the Covenant School. Law enforcement officer took these pictures. So if somebody hasn't already lost their job, somebody's going to lose their job over this for trying to get the truth out. And for that, I hate that. But it's more than likely going to be somebody, you know how this kind of stuff works, right? I mean, some of you guys probably have law enforcement friends. I've had pictures sent to me from crime scenes of law enforcement officers' private phones. Hey, take a look at this. You know what I'm saying? So. It's not like a, a non-disclosure comes with that when you text that to a friend. My guess is this probably got sent to somebody and it made its rounds and eventually found its way at the Tennessee Star. Somebody probably made a little scratch off of that. But let me point out some of the things that are of note in here and then we'll get into the stuff that makes you scratch your head. A lot of this is stuff that will hurt the FBI's feelings and the ATS feelings because it's inside the mind of a mentally deranged person that truly and clearly has a mental disorder, which is something that the mainstream media and politicians are trying you, to make you not believe. In other words, I've shown you before in the DSM-5 book that gender dysphoria is a thing. It's a treatable thing. It's just like I always say, if you have a friend who has schizophrenia, which is in the same book, and it's outlined in the same book as a different type of mental derangement, but if you have a schizophrenic friend and they come up to you and say, hey, Paul, you hear those voices? And he and I are the only people in the room. I don't pat him on the shoulder and say, yeah, Billy, I hear them too. Good for you. I don't celebrate 
Billy's mental illness when he hears other voices in the room, which is why I think it's wrong for us to celebrate something like this that is equally a mental illness. And I say this all the time. This is likely a way that pe people have their own way of crying for help. This is likely a cry for help from these people. When they come to you and say, I think I'm a boy, when they're clearly a girl, in many cases, that is probably their way of coming to you and saying, help me. I need help. I need some support. You are my friend. You are my family. I need your help. But instead, because it's the trendy thing to do these days, people put their arm around them and go, Yeah, man, I know you're not really a girl, but let's pretend you are. Let's do this. That's not the right thing to do. Now you have ignored their cry for help, and they'll never receive it because nobody is helping them. We are celebrating their mental illness instead of trying to treat their mental illness. Well, this book is full of stuff like that. Look over to the right. Why does my brain not work right? Because I was born wrong. Things like that throughout these entire writings by this deranged person. Here was one thing that was a little bit out of place based on all the other writings in this journal. I want my massacre to end in a way that Eric and Dylan would be proud of. Of course, she's referencing the Columbine shooting. Now, granted, she didn't do a whole lot of research on this because Eric and Dylan were not the sociopaths. Eric was the sociopath and Dylan was just a follower. He was not a leader and he simply followed the true sociopath, which was Eric. So not a whole lot of uh, research done by this person because really Eric was the mastermind and that was the person that she likely idolized if she was idolizing this group of idiots shooting a school up. So um, again, the reference here to Eric and Dylan of Columbine was particularly odd to me based on something I'm gonna show you here in a second. Now, most of this journal dates back a couple of months or so before the actual event took place at Covenant School. But notice the date at the top, 325. This was two days prior to the Covenant shooting. On my way to the range, and saw a billboard on suicide. I'm gonna get more on this later. Then look down a little ways. It says, a lady got ricocheted. What a horrible way of spelling there. That's definitely a product of a public school system, not a private school. Doubt this person learned that at uh, Covenant. Got a ricocheted in the left ankle. I saw the EMTs working on her leg on the floor and they took her away on a gurney. Foreshadowing on my own massacre? Question mark. There was blood splatter on the floor, police asking questions to the other people that were in the range. That to me is very haunting. If not necessarily the lady who had the, the um, likely the whatever came off the steel target, it's probably what happened, came off the steel target and hit, hit her in the leg. That lady not necessarily haunting. The law enforcement that were there, the law enforcement that were there asking questions about people who were there to get an official statement were literally there in the presence of and likely talked to the school shooter of the Covenant school shooting two days prior. Now, that, that all for nothing, right? I mean, it's not like they would have guessed anything, not like they could have prevented it. I mean, I'm not into the whole thought crime BS. But again, thinking back, I wonder if these same law enforcement officers that took these statements at this range look back on their notes and realize that they might have been talking to a future killer from two days prior to a horrible event at a private school where three nine-year-olds and three adults were actually murdered. I mean, I again, nothing they could have done, not implying that, but what, a, what an odd feeling you would have as the people making those reports if you look back on that and realize I spoke to that person two days before they carried out this atrocity. Now this is kind of a countdown, fun day tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure what that's referencing because this looks like this was four days prior to the actual shooting. And this kind of perplexed me. There were things throughout here where this same person blasphemizes religion and God and Jesus, actually called Jesus a faggot. I don't know if I'm gonna get in trouble for saying that word, but it's not my word, it's her word. She used that, she said, if something about if she's not allowed in heaven, if God doesn't allow her in heaven, then Jesus is, is a faggot. That's what she wrote. But oddly enough, she disparages religion and Christianity more specifically, but also asks God to forgive her, asks God to let her into heaven. 
And then I saw another post where she's writing 666 on there. So yeah, man, absolute confusion in this person's mind. And this is the day, 32723. She calls it Death Day, Dark Abyss. The day, excuse me, today is the day. The day has finally come. I can't believe it's here. I know how I was able, I don't know how I was able to get this far, but here I am. I'm a little nervous, but excited too. Been excited for the past two weeks. That is wild that somebody is that mentally deranged where they have been planning something like this for this long and they have still stuck to it. Again, one thing we have not gotten is a toxicology report to show the meds. Not if, not if, to show the meds that this person was on. This person was on some serious medication. Serious medication. I'm not even talking about the hormones that jack your system up even more. I'm talking about just the mental, the anxiety, the the suicide, the depression, all the stuff that went in. This person wrote every other page talking about how they wish they would die. So they were on medication. I'm curious what SSRIs this person was on because they were on SSRIs. There ain't no question about it. Now, I feel like I have to include a couple of things that came out a month or so ago. You'll remember the FBI memo on protection of legacy tokens. That's a new term sent to Nashville police in May 2023, opposed release of covenant killer documents, cited destruction precedent. So they're encouraging the destruction of everything, right? This is the FBI, this is the DOJ that's encouraging Nashville police to destroy evidence. Now, this is the same evidence they've told us that we cannot see because there's an ongoing investigation, yet they are encouraging Nashville police to destroy the evidence from an ongoing investigation. Go figure. Now they reference legacy tokens. New made up term. They state mass shootings have been occurring with alarming frequency over the past few decades in the United States. Of course, these people should know better, but they're actually letting themselves get led into the drama stirred up by politicians and the media who are miscalculating these numbers. But nevertheless, we wouldn't expect anything better from a left-led FBI. Offenders of these attacks often leave behind items to claim credit for the attack and or articulate the motivation behind it. BAU, this is the office that they have, refers to these items as, quote, legacy tokens. The review of these items is critical to identifying the motive as well as the choice of timing and location of the attack. They go on to give their reasons why they strongly discourage the public dissemination of any of the legacy tokens. And here's the reason that stuck out to me the most. Number three, public access to legacy tokens will also facilitate false narratives and inaccurate information. You know they're talking about me. For personal gain, self-professed experts, they're talking about me, <laughs> will proffer their perspectives on the motivations behind the attack. Still talking about me. Many of these pontificators, that's me, will be inexperienced or untrained and therefore inaccurate in their assessment, further confusing or potentially inflaming the public. All me. You can tell this is a group of people who put themselves way up on a pedestal based on sheets of paper that they frame and they put on the wall. They paid for people to tell them they were smart by hanging these pieces of paper on the wall. When you and I, using common sense and easily putting pieces together, say something that they don't like, they reference their framed paper on the wall and say, hey, Paul doesn't have the framed paper. I do. I paid for this. So I'm smarter than him. They really believe that this, the existence of paper inside a frame, makes them smarter than you and I. That's why they're speaking down to us right here, and that's why they're lowballing us and lowbrowing us and saying that we're stupid, don't listen to us. This also may lead to unintended consequences for the segment of the population more vulnerable or open to conspiracy theories, which will undoubtedly abound. This is in reference to a mentally deranged person who thought she was something that she wasn't, so she pretended to do other things to make her a boy when she wasn't and never would be. So this is specific to that. So whenever they say 
This may lead to unintended, unintended consequences for the segment of the population more vulnerable. They're talking about trans people. They're worried about something happening to them by people like us who are normal people. And I use normal loosely because I ain't normal. But I don't pretend to be something that I'm not, right? This tells me that we have people internally at the FBI who are likely suffering from these same things, this same gender dysphoria. My guess is the DEI hiring process has probably polluted this pool of people within the FBI. And now we're starting to see that come through because they're going to suppress actual information that the public needs to hear. And they're doing this in the name of protecting their friends and even probably themselves. Now, I'm guessing here, but they have a motive by posting this like this. They are trying to protect a certain group of people. And let's face it, I've said this before and I've shown this before. These people are like a 0.000% of the general public. This is not like, like you could go a lifetime and never cross, cross paths with one of these types of people, right? So they're super, 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 very small subset of the general population out there. Yet we are trying to make the entire population believe and play along to their pretend game. That's not normal thinking. I'm sorry guys, it's just not. You have a dog pretending to be a cat and you want me to say that I heard that dog meow. Well, I'm not going to do it. Just because it's your game and you want to play along with it doesn't mean I have to play. They may be your rules, but I don't have to play the game. Below that, this is interesting to me. This goes back to the referencing of the Columbine thing. There's existing precedent for not releasing legacy token materials to the public, most notably the decision to destroy the basement tapes produce, excuse me, produced by the offenders of the Columbine High School attack. They won't even name Eric Harris in this. They say by the offenders of the Columbine School attack. So they destroyed evidence in that case. And they think that's a good thing. I don't think it's ever a good idea to destroy evidence. I'm sorry. I don't care if it's somebody that I'm on their side or somebody that I'm against. I think the destruction of evidence is always a bad thing because evidence is the only thing that lets us know if we're speaking about the truth. We may not like the truth, but the evidence proves to no normal people like me and most of you out there that, okay, you know, I don't agree with your decision, but I'm reading the evidence, and I guess you're right, so I will, I will agree, we'll agree to disagree. So at least a rational person can come to the right conclusion, even if it's not what they want to believe. When, when you destroy evidence, you allow that person to assume what they want, and that becomes the fact because you don't give them the proof to think otherwise. Now I want to point out again that I think it's really odd and very coincidental and maybe the FBI took this information talking about the Columbine shooting because the killer in the Covenant case mentioned it, but again very coincidental that both of them happened to reference in their materials the Columbine shooting. You connect those dots however you want to. I'm going to show you something now pointing back to a slide that I showed previously. It's going to make you scratch your head. I want you to look at this. I'm going to read this sentence first, and I'm not going to tell you what I see. I want you to tell me what you see first. I'm going to pause for a second, and we're going to read this together. On my way to the range and saw a billboard on suicide only meters away from Sumner Gun and Supply. You guys see what I see. Most of you that watch my channel know that, I mean, I try to be real fair. I. I I piss off a lot of people that are on our side sometime because I don't I don't jump to that conclusion that most people want to jump to. I kind of want to see a little evidence. When things make your hair stand up on the back of your neck, <clears throat> excuse me, or when one plus one just ain't two, or they're telling you it's something else and you know it's supposed to be two, this one really stood out at me for a couple of reasons. First of all, below the word meters is scratched out. For the life of me, I can't tell what was scratched out. But let me ask you something. For all of you who were born and raised in the United States and do not have military backgrounds and have never been influenced by anybody in the military, have never been influenced by any uh, federal organizations that may have ties to the military or use military lingo or different types of phrases that the military might use, 
This person, for all intents and purposes that I know of and everything that I've read, was born and raised in the United States. No military background. They use the word meters here. That's the metric system. We use the imperial system here in the United States, one of the only countries in the world that uses that. Whenever people go into the military, in many cases, they adopt measurements in meters instead of yards when they're shooting long range, right? The average person who was not in the military usually does not refer to things in meters. If we're talking about things that are in that, that range, we're going to use yards, in some cases feet. The average American does not use the word meters. Why is this 26-year-old, I believe, person who was born and raised in the middle of the country, in Tennessee of all places, using the word meters instead of yards or feet? Or in this case, they're talking about how far a billboard was from somewhere else. They're talking, they, why not use miles, right? Half a mile, quarter mile. Now, to be fair, we're already talking about a mentally deranged person. I can acknowledge that. So I don't expect a whole lot to make sense because this same person wrote in this same journal that I haven't shown you how they were simulating sex with stuffed animals and she was making fake penises to simulate that sex in her bedroom as a 20-year-old adult faking sex with stuffed animals and dolls. So granted, I'm not the one that's going to sit here and say that this person was the picture of overall intelligence and common sense and normalcy. But meters is not a term that most people that you will ever meet who were born and raised in the United States that don't have military affiliation will ever use. And I have to go back to what I stated earlier. And I'm not, I'm not implying this. I, I'm not implying a dotted line to a federal agency. I'm not implying that. I'm not saying that it couldn't happen either. I'm just saying I am not implying this. But, could this person have had someone speaking to them from a federal organization? And maybe they did go to the range. Maybe they used the words meters at the range. None of the long range uh, shooting ranges that I go to use the word meters. None of them. I live in South Louisiana. I've never seen meters used at a range or posted at a range. If a target is downrange, it's 200 yards. It's 300 yards. People go deer hunting. What did you make that shot at? He was 400 yards away. You don't hear it discussed in meters. That's a little strange. And I don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry. I thought this was America.